Hello everybody, this is Battle Tony Cell here, and today I'll be going over a comp vs comp matchup guide. The enhanced comp I'm going to be covering is going to be Turbo, because that still seems to be the most powerful enhanced comp in the game. And it will be against Feral Lock Paladin. Now this is a up and coming comp, especially with Ferals getting a buff to their sustain, and of course Paladin still being very strong. But of course this comp is also play with a Resto Shaman at times, but generally I've been seeing a lot more Paladin. But either way you will play it the same, so this will be very helpful for regardless of which healer you're fighting. And it plays out a lot like WLS, so if you're having trouble with WLS you can definitely pick up some things off of this comp that will translate very well to how to approach that comp. Now when it comes to talents, uh, it's going to be pretty standard for the most part if you've seen any other guides when it comes to talents. Um, I'm going of course Nature's Guardian, Windlock Totem for my warrior of course as well as myself for keeping up with the healer. Uh, Call of the Elements uh, is super important against this comp, I would never go projection due to the fact that of course two Windlock Totems is super crucial for melee but in, as an added benefit you get two trimmers which is obviously really good against Warlock so you can stay offensive a lot more and your healer is obviously going to be able to keep you guys up a lot easier. So with coupling all of these abilities to stay offensive, we want to make sure that the time that we do spend offensive is spent with dealing out the most pressure as possible. So I'm going to be going Echo the Elements every single time to get as many Lava Lashes as possible. And now against an Affliction Warlock, you might think that Rushing Streams is good. And while it does have its purpose, I suppose, Ancestral Guidance is definitely the way you want to go. And the reason that Ancestral Guidance is so good is because it can perfectly counter a Demon Soul from a Warlock when you couple it with Ascendance. And when it comes to our level 90 talents, I'm really going to take Elemental Blast every single time because I want as much damage as possible. And in addition, I want um, the high value buff, which can increase my damage even more than Ellie Blast itself does. And for level 100 talents, I'm going to take Elemental Fusion every single time. And there are a number of reasons for this. Um, the ones that, that are strictly talent based for my reasons are the fact that it's going to have a lot of more AoE spread pressure and especially against the Paladin he's going to have a hard time dealing with that but also because the Warlock has a pet so you can cleave the pet especially uh, with Rin so Rin plus an Elemental Fusion Flame Shock is going to bring a pet down a lot faster than uh, otherwise in addition to that that means that he's going to a lot of times be forced to use a Void Walker instead of a Overseer in a lot of situations. And so lastly, Elemental Fusion is going to help you out tremendously because if you stack that with going on to Glyphs now, uh, the Flame Shot Glyphs, so it heals you for 45% of the damage your Flame Shot deals to enemy targets. This will include pets that we've talked about earlier. So that's going to be even more healing that you're getting from that. So that means that your, your cleansing and your heals and whatnot can be on to your, your other teammates. In addition to that, you're obviously uh, able to spend your globals more on offensive abilities. And I will also take Cleansing Waters, because Cleansing Waters is a great counter to Affliction Lock in general, but it especially shines during Demon Soul where you're able to reduce the damage that they get from their haunts and just their ticks in general because their Curse um, of Agony is the highest deal damage dealing ability that they have. So if you and your Druid are, are dispelling that on cooldown pretty much, you're going to be able to stay offensive a lot longer and just put the enemy team in a lot of bad situations throughout the entire game. And for the third one, I'm going to go Lightning Shield, because that's always the best choice in that slot. So now that we have our talents and our glyphs right, let's talk about our, the matchup in general and how we should approach the situation. So first and foremost, I want to put a kind of disclaimer out, and of course you will notice here that I'm playing with a Resto Druid in both of these matchups. Uh, in both these matches rather, so this will mean that we're actually better equipped to deal with lock healing overall. Um, and this is what allows us to attack the healer. So if you're playing turbo with a Resto Druid, attacking the healer, whether it's a Paladin or a Resto Shaman, is going to be your bread and butter strategy. This is because Resto Druids are better able to deal with the lock spread damage, and of course they can dispel curses, so the damage overall is going to be less, which allows you to go for the healer, which is going to make the game a lot easier. However, if you're playing with the Paladin, you can still definitely win, but your choice of target is going to be the Warlock. So now that we've got that little bit out of the way, let's talk about the matchup between uh, Turbo Cleave with a Resto Druid versus Feral Lock Paladin. So like I talked about before, our strategy is to attack the Paladin for as long as possible, for as much damage as possible, and we want to make sure that we're doing that at the same time that our Resto Druid is not dying, because generally speaking, the Resto Druid is going to be the target that's going to die if anybody does that on your team. I feel really confident about this matchup, and I think that Turbo Cleave can beat this 9 times out of 10. The only time that you will lose is when they swap to your healer for the most part. Um, with that in mind, they are going to ride either yourself or your warrior. So you want to make sure that you're doing your part to keep your team offensive while not putting your druid under too much distress and making him a viable swap target. So let's get into the match. First thing I want you guys to notice is that I use my fire elemental totem up in the drain so that it cannot be killed. 
Um, this will allow us to get a lot of pressure going in the earlier parts, and of course, this is not really usable in most in a lot of maps. Um, but generally speaking, I do try to use it early um, so that it makes it hard for them to kill, but at the same time, I get as much uh, utility out of it as possible. Now, sticking to our strategy, I'm going to try to get on the Paladin as soon as possible, so I get a Flame Shock on the, on the Warlock, throw out a quick Lava Lash to get that, uh, the Flame Shock spread going as soon as possible, get my healing going as quick as possible, swap to the Paladin right then and there, no, not wasting any time. If he makes it this easy, I'm going to take that opportunity every single time. So now that we've connected our target of choice, I'm going to look for that first burst chance that the enemy team is going to take. My rest of Druid gets Shadow Furied, and I see the Warlock casting Fear, so I'm definitely going to shear that. And the Feral Druid responds by popping Incarn, because he assumed that the Feral, the, the Warlock rather, was going to get a, a Fear on my rest of Druid. So as soon as I see that, I'm never going to hesitate. I Sham Rage, I consider Trinketing here, but it seems like I'm okay at this point in time. Um, and I'm going to pop Draenei out of the stun. So what you'll see next is that my Druid Trinkets and I, I Tremor at the same time. So this is, gonna, this is the one thing that's going to be really scary because of the fact that he, he can't get swapped to, which is what you'll see happen here. So because of this, I'm not going to use any of my stacks for uh, Ellie Blast until I feel like he is 100% safe. And um, I do have a sentence and, of course, my trinket if I need it. So if I do need those, I'm definitely not going to hesitate to use any cooldowns. Because you'll see we've already used a lot of cooldowns. I haven't hesitated to use them because during end card is the only time where you are really going to be in trouble. Um, after that, the rot just doesn't really seem to do too much against turbo as opposed to other comps. Now, as you notice, I've been hitting the Paladin this whole time. And the reason I'm doing this is for a uh, number of reasons. First off, being far away from the Druid makes it more likely that I might be able to range his clones or be more likely that the Paladin's going to be at a box to where I can line it pretty easily. Um, and also it makes it harder for the Druid to kick me if I start casting heals if it gets really to that point. Um, also if I try to hit a Warlock, um, he can be uh, Death Coil, so a lot of times I'll, if I, by attacking him I'm going to get Coiled, um, which is also not very good at all. And just as long as the Paladin's in line of, of the Feral and the Warlock, I'm going to be able to heal just as much, if not more, and dealing damage to the Paladin is just a lot more effective because it makes our rot more effective because it makes it hard for him to heal. Um, in addition, Shadow Furies are not going to be a big problem as well due to the fact that I'm not going to be near uh, my teammates or in the area of it. So hitting the Paladins is what, be, what, what I want to do if, if I get the chance. If they're, gonna, if they're hitting my Warrior, hitting my Druid, I don't care. I'm still hitting the Paladin. And if they're hitting me, I still want to be healing the Paladin because I want to be able to make sure that I can maximize our damage and rot and pressure and just have kicks when we need them on the Paladin. As you can see, my Warrior and I are finally able to converge on the Paladin uh, with some more damage after that first initial burst session. And when this happens, you want to make sure that the Warrior has priority kick on the Paladin. Always let him kick first because of the fact that his, his pummel is melee range ability and yours is range so you can use it on a clone if you guys aren't stunned but in addition you can also stop warlock casts which is something I do a lot uh, to just prevent the rot which is something that will help us stay offensive like I talked about before so usually I interrupt um, interrupt uh, warlock casts to stop the pressure and I will try and uh, ground clones or something like that so but usually the, the clones aren't as big of a deal due to the fact that they are in melee range, so the, the warrior can pummel those as well, or charge them if need be. Now, the main thing that you and your rest of Druid need to be on par about is being able to be in range of Tremor, because not being in range of Tremor is going to be a huge factor in whether you guys are able to stick on the pallet enough, have a lot of pressure, or if you're constantly feeling like you need to pull back and, and run back to your Druid, whether just to Tremor him, or to heal him or anything like that, because if he's getting spam feared or spam clone, that's when the rod is really going to start to take over. Um, and you guys will fall behind. So you'll see that my Druid uh, does a good job of, of uh, displacing in and making sure that I'm in range and letting me know that he is on, he's off the R of Clone or Fear, either one, and that I'm going to be in range of Tremor. Now we're going to skip forward to the next end card because pretty much it's just rinse and repeat, just running at the Paladin until this point, spamming cleanses, and because of our ability to outheal the damage and spamming uh, cleanse with the the curses, we were able to hold off on Sham Rage, so I haven't Sham Rage since that first Incarn. So what you'll see here is that the Feral pops a second Incarn, and my Warrior answers it with a stun to a Fear, which he of course will trinket. Now, he's going to stun me first, the Feral is, and I'm definitely hovering over Sham Rage, ready to press it, but they definitely swap to my Druid here. So I'm going to rinse and repeat, throw out another Drain I heal on him. So it's really nice that this lines up with the Incarn, which is a really good reason as to why I recommend Drain as a Shaman, Enhanced Shaman. Because, like I said, the Druid is the only one that's going to die and he's going to get bursted. So I'm not going to take any necessary risks. And here you'll see that uh, I'm not going to use my, my stacks for anything but heals during this time. Uh, so I'm at 80%. I toss myself up a full heal for the Druid reconnects to me. And this way we're going to stay 100% safe during this time of Incarn. 
So let's take a look at the game deep into dampening. Now, what this should look like is that your team should be very, very healthy. The enemy team should be uh, struggling to maintain the, the healer's HP and mana. So the Paladin's mana will start to deplete really, really rapidly. It doesn't take very, very long at all. Um, and once that happens, you will start to get cooldowns uh, left, right, and center. They'll just be coming at you left and right. Um, so with that in mind, it's obviously a really good bonus to attacking the Paladin of being able to stop his drinks because obviously you can't drink if you're attacking him. Um, and so at this point, what you want to keep an eye on is if you're Draenei, you're going to keep an eye on your Draenei cooldown because that's obviously going to sync up with the, the Feral's Incarn. Uh, so that'll help you keep track of that as well. But what, I, what, what you personally as the Enhancer Shaman, outside what you, you have been doing all game with keeping cleanses and just dealing damage to the Paladin, is that you want to watch for the next Dark Soul. Because once you start getting to this point where the end is in sight, that the very next Dark Soul uh, with dampening could be the end if you don't react appropriately. So don't hesitate to pop a, a sentence there if that does happen. Now, what you'll see is that we actually just end up getting the kill, but that's how my mindset is at this point in time. I'm really, really ready to, to pop a sentence and can't be really, um, you can't afford to be greedy with that because that'll hurt your Druid's mana in addition to getting a lot of pressure out and a lot of cooldowns, especially once Incarn's coming up. All right, guys, and that does it for my guide of Turbo Cleave with a Rest of Druid versus Feral Lock Paladin. Hope it was informative and enjoyable to watch, and I'll see you next time.